Yeah. Good morning. Uh, so we are uh, now in the last concluding lecture of our course, Vehicle Dynamics. Uh, I hope you had a very interesting sessions uh, uh, of learning this course so far. Um, uh, I would like to take some feedback at the end of this uh, today's lecture. Uh, before that, uh, let's come to our main task of completing an important topic uh, for uh, uh, this course uh, as that will be a concluding lecture. And I'll also propose uh, one or two videos of my lectures uh, to have some additional uh, learning as the time constraint. Uh, I have to give you that link of my video lectures already recorded and you would go through that uh, uh, two hours of lectures and that is essentially a uh, requirement for your uh, course completion to feel a sense of uh, the entire syllabus is adhered to and you are also had um, uh, done your um, uh, achieved your course outcome right so with that note uh, let me uh, just uh, share my screen without any further delay and to go ahead with today's lecture so hope you are able to see the screen uh, uh, the screen shows what we are doing in the last class the first slide of last class i just quickly browse through these two slides uh, uh, and then we will get into today's class so in the last class essentially we were looking at an important um, forces that are required for vehicle translation what are those uh, forces uh, uh, one is uh, tractive effort uh, at the tire road interaction for your vehicle to uh, propel and you have a vehicle to translate and another force is braking effort uh, that is required your vehicle to decelerate and stop your vehicle and uh, in that process we understood two important definitions and the phenomena you can say uh, that is uh, taking place in the tire road interaction. One is uh, longitudinal slip, another one is called uh, skid. So we understood what is 100% slip and 100% skid. So 100% slip refers to the wheels are spinning at the same point where vehicle is not translating forward. So that would be witnessed or you, know, um, uh, you could have seen that on a muddy road or an icy surface. You see that you apply the uh, pedal you apply the um, uh, driving torque to the wheels but uh, the wheels will be spinning but vehicle will not go forward so that is essentially referring to 100 percent slip condition 100 percent slip condition whereas on the other hand 100 percent skid referred to what uh, you are applying brakes on the uh, vehicle and then uh, the wheels get locked uh, and when wheels get locked there is no rotation of your wheels but you see that uh, the high speed you come and suddenly jams on the brake and your vehicle is going to skid, slide and stop. So vehicle is translating, but wheels are not rotating and that is what we call it as 100% skid. So these two scenarios we never invite to happen in our vehicle when we drive, right? So that is where we understand the slip phenomena necessary for generation of tractive force and that has to be within an optimum level. And the skid is required to happen but not 100% uh, that ensures that um, you would have always a slip present so the wheels will be rolling not locking or it is locking it is for a fraction of second millisecond and again release and lock and release and that is what is that we have seen and uh, driver assisting system called an ABS anti-lock brake system and so on so this is all we have studied so we know what are this uh, sensibly you have understood and then uh, um, we have looked at what is happening uh, to the tire and its behavior when you apply driving torque or a braking torque. So when you apply driving torque, uh, you need to understand what is this equivalent translatory progression of your vehicle wheel center. So that would be uh, <clears throat> smaller than that of a free rolling tire translation. Free rolling tire translation is going to be 2 pi r for one revolution say, where the small r is referring to rolling uh, free rolling radius. So for one revolution of the wheel, if the wheel center would have translated by 2 pi r and that would not be happening when I apply a driving torque that would be smaller than that and that is what is uh, dictated by this r omega times v, right. On the other hand, on a braking torque when it is applied, uh, you see the other scenario. So the equivalent translation of your center would be greater than that of 2 pi r and that is because of <clears throat> the stretch of the tread uh, in braking case. Uh, in the case of driving torque applied, the compression of the tread. So this phenomenon of compression is what is the basis for deriving the tractive force that is developed at the tire road interaction. 
And so that's what uh, in today's lecture I'm going to explain you with the theory proposed by Julians and a simplified version of it. And that would be very interesting. And that is the basis that you should uh, uh, understand that you know, any tire model can be developed. Uh, tire model, when I say, what is that essentially? The tire model should come out with a formula. That formula can be based on theory like we are going to see today, or it can be based on uh, um, fitting the data uh, obtained through experiments and you have a common formula to represent uh, these forces as function of slip or function of skid or function of uh, slip angle if it is to represent your uh, lateral force or it is to represent your self-aligning torque as function of slip and so on. So this variations all can be given by one single formula and that formula is what is called the magic formula. I would uh, uh, um, upload the video lecture link uh, for magic formula lecture at the end of this uh, um, theory of Julian's uh, model you understand in this lecture for you to go through that one hour le uh, lecture and to understand uh, what is this advanced version of the magic formula, uh, why is it called magic formula and so on from that uh, particular lecture, <coughs> right? Now, uh, let's go uh, march forward uh, in our uh, study. So uh, and we have ended last class uh, looking at the attractive force variation. If you look at as function of slip and that would be varying in this fashion as shown. So you see there is a portion OA. So that is linear uh, uh, relationship of your attractive force as slip angle. Whereas after point A, it is non-linearly varying. And uh, beyond this peak point, you see sudden uh, rapid fall to a value corresponding to sliding value. So this 100% corresponding to 100% spinning, 100% spinning, right? So there is no addition uh, present uh, uh, the contact patch with the uh, road surface and uh, the road surface is uh, IC surface what is happening there is no mu p and uh, uh, that is why there is no forward motion so though it is uh, referring here as mu s w and this is going to referring to spinning at the same location and um, the, uh, if that is spinning maybe with the inertia of the vehicle uh, have got an achieved speed then it will have some arbitrary uh, uh, motion and that is uh, referring to an unstable state in this case. Similarly, here we have seen uh, breaking force is skid and you see 100% skid referring to um, complete sliding and wheel locking scenario. And both of them are function of load. So if I increase the load in my vehicle, I will have this curve is going to be increasing like that. So that is very much witnessed from this uh, breaking effort as a skid plot. As the load increases, you see that uh, the um, peak value of the breaking effort also is increases that can be developed at the tire road interaction due to the phenomena called the skid. So uh, what is an operating range of skid is this. So if this is there, then it would be achieved. So ensuring that the brake system in your vehicle to distribute the braking force in front and rear axle so that the wheel locks is prevented and then the deceleration is achieved quickly to stop your vehicle as shortest distance when you have uh, able to get the full potential of braking effort that is possible at these different loads by means of your brake system. And that's what is the role of the anti-lock brake system in your vehicle, right? So with this all uh, note, uh, we understood importantly two stiffnesses, longitudinal slip stiffness and skid stiffness in this case. And we looked at this formula. So today's class essentially, I'm going to show how these formulas are derived. What is the basic theory proposed by Julians is what I'm going to explain. And that is the end of the course uh, lecturing. Additionally, two lectures I'll uh, link, I'll upload and that you have to go through uh, because you may have questions from that part as well uh, due to the uh, shortest and semester the additional lectures I require. Please go through them as you have this coming Monday your examination A1 slot. I, I feel that uh, in this preparation you will not skip the two hours of lecture link which I am going to upload and you would certainly have questions based on that as well <coughs> in the examination. All right. So let's go ahead of the today's lecture of deriving these formulas uh, and what is that. Uh, strength of material approaching it is what I'm going to explain. So today's lecture number is 45 and today's date 10, 12, 2021. So what is that we are going to do is uh, the theory proposed by Julian, simplified the theory.
proposed by Julian. And that theory is called the Julian's theory or Julian's tire model. <clears throat> so what is that uh, it's done uh, by Julian is that he has considered the tire to be an elastic band. The tire tread has to be uh, considered as an elastic band. So elastic band means we have width and we have a band. So you put it in a hand a rubber band, so something like that. You can imagine the tire diameter extreme di uh, the diameter and the tire size you can consider instead of a real tire you will consider the uh, uh, elastic band which is under tension which is under the inflated condition so the uh, shape of that uh, when it is not loaded is perfectly circular band <clears throat> and when it is loaded you see that uh, the contact patch would be of rectangular shape so you would have uh, because of that a rectangular contact patch uh, that would happen and uh, it will have a uniform distribution of normal pressure normal pressure small p right so if you look at the resultant of uh, this normal pressure would be acting at uh, the center of the contact patch right now this contact patch uh, uh, how can you imagine this uh, with the diagram let me just draw this diagram of the band the tire model You see here, this is your tire. I just have exaggerated this diagram. So this is uh, or, uh, just a minute. This slide itself. Let's go to the next slide and then we have this diagram here. So this is the diagram. So look at this uh, diagram here. So you see here there is a portion in the front uh, which is under compression. I'm not going to consider in the simplified theory the strain in this compression. Uh, the proposed original theory by Julian is uh, the strain epsilon is there present here and the same would be present in the uh, adhesion zone of the contact patch. But uh, we are going to consider uh, the strain which is compressive strain in the contact patch only. So an elemental length L with the strain uh, epsilon considered then uh, it is 1 minus epsilon times L is what is uh, this length here uh, the elemental length so it is shortened in length so that is what is uh, you should consider so you see here the normal distribution then what's happening it is not uniform it is skewed uh, to the forward of your pa contact patch and this is what is um, uh, to be noted with the offset distance uh, yes and responsible for uh, uh, you are rolling the resistance and uh, responsible for creation of effects. So here uh, in this diagram for a time being the uh, rolling resistance uh, is not uh, represented. That's fine. It is really resultant and this offset is not now to be considered because of that because of this rolling action when it is the band is not rolling. You would have this exactly matching with this but uh, once it start rolling uh, the velocity uh, of the center of its uh, wheel uh, realized you see that the normal would be uh, going front. Uh, it is uh, not uh, by hysteresis loop you are saying, it is uh, the distribution. Why? Because as it is uh, applied with the uh, driving torque, the compression of the tread and there is an associated shear deformation of tread and sidewall and an initiation of um, sliding at the rear of the contact patch. And what will happen? Your entire uh, contact patch uh, will become uh, unsymmetric and it will be skewed to the left. That's the reason here. So the normal pressure distribution is like that. And then longitudinal stress, if you look at, the stress would be at the rear more compared to that of the front end of this. Right? So um, uh, you, that is why this variation is like that. So here it is longitudinal stress, which is responsible for 
creation of your FX. The stress into the contact patch area is what is uh, essentially uh, um, given by this. So the um, diagram here, right? OK, so now what do we are going to do in this is um, uh, we are going to derive this expression. What is that? We are going to derive this expression and we are going to understand this graph. So I may come back to this slide and I'll go ahead with the completing uh, on this assumption here in this first slide and then proceed to the lecture. So what is an another important assumption? The contact patch. Let us call CP contact patch. Here it is written uniformly distributed normal pressure, but this contact patch will be divided is divided into two zones into an adhesion zone or adhesion region and and a sliding region and a sliding region so what i mean by that is if this is your contact patch and uh, um, this is your uh, tire wheel assembly and then this is your contact patch so if you look at from the top so you will have a rectangular patch In this rectangular patch the length of this patch is uh, say lt length of the contact patch is lt so this is my contact patch and this is length is lt in this uh, i have my origin instead of contact patch center i'll take this uh, front of this as origin so from the front of this uh, point o i'll consider uh, an elemental element at a distance x to uh, go ahead with my derivation what's happening to this but now uh, what was that i'm saying is this entire zone lt into width of this tire small b right this contact area would have been divided into two zones uh, that zones are divided into two zones so maybe i have this zone and then uh, remaining this zone so the zone which is adhere is what is defined by lc lc is what is called in characteristic length lc is what is called characteristic length lc and then uh, this is sliding uh, portion of this and this zone is sliding so the sliding action would initiate from the trailing end so this is my forward end so velocity is in this direction as it is rolling like this my fx developed would be in this direction and uh, uh, you see that the weight normal acting here and i'll have my normal uh, with an offset right that's all uh, what is that's happening and you'll have an inertia force uh, and i'm not now drawing this equilibrium uh, diagram i'm just describing what is this contact patch zone it has got uh, uh, one an adhesion zone adhesion region that is from the front of the contact patch till the rear some distance and given by uh, length lc this lc would be varying so lc would be what equal to lt that means there is complete addition there is no sliding zone Sli sliding zone is developed as it has been uh, increasing its speed as it has been the slip phenomena is increases if slip is zero then it is completely adhered there is no rotation if slip is starting then there is uh, uh, the initiation of uh, sliding at the rear and that would progress as the slip increases that's what you witness from this graph that's what you witness from this uh, graph this graph so look at here i have an x axis slip and y axis tractive effort so when slip is zero there is no force as the slip value coming and, and because of the driving torque i would have my variation linear till point a so till point a it is completely adhesion zone there is no sliding that takes place from point A, you see it's non-linear because there is a sliding from the trailing end and that would progress towards the leading end. And that would be just like a line contact, just like a line contact point B, a small contact. So it is not completely sliding, but it is uh, having. So you can analogously imagine how you are participating in a race. You have to um, capitalize your full energy and gain its 
complete kinetic energy, your kinetic energy within shortest distance. That means you have to accelerate yourself and then maintain the speed to complete your race, right? So how do you run? Are you running that having your foot full contact on the ground? No. You are running on your toes. So if your toes are not on ground, you are falling down. That's different scenario. But it is not going to happen. So the athlete is running, not as full foot contact on the ground to win. He is running on a stone. That is what is this similar point at point B. So when point B means the tire is adhered to the ground, not sliding completely, but it is it's converting its full potential into kinetic energy. So at this point, so if it is going beyond, that is what is corresponding to the maximum slip, corresponding to this. After that slip, what is happening? Uh, it is going to lose uh, adhesion zone completely and then uh, suddenly it is going to experience complete sliding and from beyond B is what is uncertain. So you are required to operate your vehicle in this zone to achieve the maximum tactical effort. And to represent this entire scenario by this graph, where an equation is what is this? And this equation is addition of uh, force developed in sliding zone and force developed in adhesion zone. So this is what I am going to get uh, this expression in this derivation, right? So let's get back to our uh, assumption uh, slide and then come back to deriving. So that is why I defined here an adhesion zone and a sliding zone. So if we assume this, this is the contact patch equivalent to that of a foot and your heel is what is first losing the contact. So your heel is not going to be on ground when you are running. Your uh, uh, fingers in the leg is what is our the front portion is only is going to be on the contact and we are going to run. So that scenario is what is corresponding to an extraction of maximum tactic force. So this zone here, arrow mark I put, it will be progressively increasing, right? Okay, now how this force can be uh, expressed in terms of the expression that is written in the slide. So for that, let's go ahead with uh, uh, this. And another important uh, assumption here is this. The longitudinal strain that is the element L you choose and you see in the contact patch this elemental length is reduced by 1 minus epsilon times this L. Right? So this uh, epsilon is what is called compressive strain. Epsilon is what is called compressive strain and it remains constant in the contact patch, in the adhesion zone of the contact patch. That's important. It's not constant in sliding zone. Sliding zone means released, then it will relax and then it will go. As it enters, it is uh, going to have this. So uh, once it is coming out of this contact patch as it rolls, then uh, it will be relaxing. The, the strain would be uh, decreasing here. Again, uh, as it is going to be increased, that is what is your cyclic loading, right? So constant in the adhesion region. So this is another important assumption. Uh, that's what, uh, these are all the assumptions that are proposed uh, for understanding this theory by Julian's one, two, three, four, five. So you should be clearly writing down uh, uh, these points. And now let's go ahead and deriving the expression, what is there in this slide, uh, two expressions. So first let us do the first one and then go in for uh, analogously, how do you get this? Right, so we have another uh, 30 minutes to complete this lecture. We would comfortably complete this derivation. So now, for the sake, uh, let me consider the tractive force per unit length, unit contact length. Right. So let's consider the tractive force per unit contact length. in the adhesion region, in the adhesion region at a distance small x from the front contact point of the model, from the front contact 
points of the model of the model elastic band so what is that expression df by dx dfx by dx so force per unit length differential length so that is what you have considered uh, in a contact patch so just to draw the contact patch this is point o and this is center line of my tire i consider at a distance x an elemental distance dx dx so dfx by dx elemental length is what i am getting and that would be given by small kt small kt times x times epsilon right so what is this kt here this kt here is tangential stiffness of the tire per unit area per unit area so it would be uh, for a radial tire on the value typically would be uh, 3930 kilo newton per meter square for radial tire of the truck radial tire the same uh, if it is bias tire you see that would have slightly more uh, value kilo newton per meter square so this is typical value so you see here meter square kilo newton per meter square that's what is tangential stiffness for unit area this multiplied by the distance x so what is the force it is felt here would be this stiffness times the length of contact patch adhesion zone is what is x and that has to be multiplied with the com compressive strain because that's a factor that is a reduction in that length so what is the reduction in the length of x is x times compression ratio it's not reduction x times compression ratio uh, com uh, compression strain is what is that uh, an effective length and i multiply i get this uh, expression and uh, this is for an uh, uh, elemental uh, force per unit length right otherwise this expression now uh, this can be analogously can be written in adhesion zone this compressive strain is proportional to the longitudinal slip so i can rewrite this as kt x into i so that's my equation number 1 and if this there is no if if there is no there is no sliding if there is no sliding here and your vehicle is moving and you are looking at this contact patch right your contact patch is this this is contact patch uh, I, i have not drawn the front view it's a top view only i have drawn so this is cp what you are looking at the width of that is d and uh, the length of the contact patch is lt so the area is lt times uh, b right okay so uh, if there is no sliding then i can represent uh, i can get my force fx from this initiation so take this d on the other side and integrate that from 0 to lt 0 to entire contact length and substitute this here so kt i x into dx so this is going to be what x squared by 2 0 to lt so i'll have my expression kt lt square by 2 into i this is what is my fx so this is simple so this expression let's call as an equation number 2 and let me rewrite this kt lt squared by 2 as ci into i this is what is fx so where the ci is what is called so uh, uh, huh? so what is the limit of the integral 0 to lt i am integrating this what is this integral inside is that the force per unit length here what is that expression you have written is that force that has been acting on this elemental area okay sir so got it you got it right yes sir so that has to be obtained based on your strength of material approach of uh, accounting compressive strain and this compressive strain is proportional to the slip in the adhesion zone that is why we have to make the statement 
there is no sliding that is taking place and then you can have this integration and that would give you now this expression where this ci here is called the longitudinal slip stiffness something analogous to uh, f x f y you are writing it as c alpha into alpha slip angle and you are writing this is cornering stiffness kilo newton per degree uh, of uh, slip angle or per radians then it has been radians that you have seen this unit same way here uh, this is per slip so it is kilo newton per slip is what is this unit right so this is uh, longitudinal slip stiffness so now this expression let's call equation number 4 right so now uh, uh, here something interesting right so let us define now this kt lt squared by 2 is what is ci as this so the ci is what is the stiffness how do you get it is the tangential stiffness multiplied by uh, lt square that is length of the contact patch which is adhered to the ground very very important i assume that it is not initially so but when it starts sliding from rear also your contact patch has got the two zones uh, identified so whatever the length of the contact uh, um, no is there that has to be brought in here so this is referring to that by 2 and uh, this is what is the ci and that's exactly is what is tan theta in your diagram which is again you can call it as dfx by dx do x do fx by do x when i tends to 0 whatever that you have so this is how you can uh, say uh, from this graph you can see here in this graph uh, you have this angle theta so what is this angle theta slope of this oa what is slope of this oa if i take this uh, uh, longitudinal force per unit length uh, approaching partially you know do fx by do x equal to 0 um, when as i tends to 0 uh, sorry not 0 do fx by do x Uh, is what is the slope as i tends to 0 so when i is not uh, going to 0 i will not have a tangent here so though i know this tangent is uh, straight line till oa uh, to uh, double ensure that uh, you are writing this definition like this the same definition you could uh, recollect you know analogous way we were writing it uh, for uh, slip uh, c alpha also do f y by do alpha as alpha tends to 0 is what is your c alpha you define the same way so this angle tan theta and that is what is your slope and that slope is what is your longitudinal slip stiffness you multiply that with i you get your fx but this fx now with this assumption there is no sliding takes place but the sliding takes place what is happening you have your non linear zone beyond point a so beyond point a this equation is not going to hold square so if i have only this equation and i start uh, uh, applying that what does that means is my vehicle is performing of its fullest potential development by 50% only by 50% only you can see that again here uh, in this graph look at here that is corresponding to fxc critical value so it is going to be half mp times w only till here that we can prove now but beyond that we are just to go it has to go that means uh, your slope would start varying from point a and your slope will become zero at point b so just before that or in slope zero you get your maximum possible traction so you have to operate at this zone so the equation what we had uh, uh, got from equation number 4 fx equal to ci into i is not a sufficient equation to represent your tire model it is only till this but your model to be represented by this expression so what is that to do further so that's what that i am going to develop now our derivation further <coughs> are you getting my point so let's call this equation uh, as uh, um, equation 2 and equation 3 is this is the equation 3 this is equation 3 i define what is ci and then i put it here then this is equation 4 and now my equation 5 is this so what is that i'm going to do is i'm going to with an increase of slip angle beyond point a so this is so this whatever we had all valid valid till point a 
in the graph. So beyond point A, as I value increases, there is an initiation of uh, um, sliding from the rear that takes place and uh, you are forced do f uh, sorry dfx by dfx by dx the longitudinal force per unit length developed would be you know kt lti is going to be uh, written as kt i'm going to uh, sorry i'm going to equate this i'm going to equate this uh, kt lti to um, mu p uh, road addition coefficient p normal pressure into b so it's limited by this and that is what is uh, can be rewritten as mu p times pb is what is normal pressure into b if you multiply by lt then it is load so what is your load w would be uh, normal pressure multiplied by the area so b into lt so if i multiply that i'll have here and i'll divide that by lt i have a denominator there is an lt so let's call this equation phi and uh, now uh, let's define point a point a is what is the critical value of i so i have to get what is this uh, uh, point uh, uh, corresponding to uh, a critical value of slip uh, where point a is defined so uh, this is at point a the slip angle is critical value because uh, it is uh, given by now I, I take this i and the rest all on the uh, denominator so it's going to be mu p times w by k t lt <coughs> already one lt so lt square um, lt square <coughs> and then i can rewrite this by i know ci is uh, kt lt squared by 2 so i divide by 2 and multiply by 2 so this is going to be mu p times w by 2 times ci where ci is longitudinal slip center so i am writing this uh, corresponding to this and this is equation number 6 and then um, I can prove that uh, corresponding uh, longitudinal force Fxe, Fxe would be what is Ci into Ic, corresponding to Ic. So substitute that here, what will happen? It is mu P times W by 2Ci is what is Ic, and that is multiplied by Ci. So this goes off, I'll have mu P times W by 2 is what is uh, this critical value. So let's call that as equation seven. So at point A, my tractive force developed is uh, half the maximum possible, but uh, I have to go beyond this to have my equation to account uh, on the portion from A to B as well. So for that, what should I do now? For that, I should consider uh, this. So Fx would be, uh, when i is so the same thing can be said like that when i is less than or equal to ic then your fx is going to be less than or equal to fxc that's what you have understood so the starting of uh, sliding at the rear what is the condition is fx reaching to fxc i reaching to ic that is what is the condition for sliding to get initiated at the rear right so the tractive force developed on the sliding zone so at beyond point, beyond point A in the graph, uh, Fxs, I write Fxs, sliding zone, what is the force, would be what is maximum possible is mp times w, and that I will write is 1 minus Lf by Lt, Lc by Lt, Lc. So I will introduce this Lc now here again in the equation, Lt, Lt. LC by LT. So this is equation 8. Equation 8. So what is this LC? This LC is what is called the characteristic length. So this characteristic length is varying length. 
characteristic length is the varying length. That is the LC varying length. And that would be given by this expression. So this LC would be equal to mu P times W by KT LT I. KT LT I. Because we, uh, we looked at that uh, LT squared is supposed to be here. Um, uh, uh, right? Uh, and I'm taking only LC here. So that, uh, L, instead of LT squared, I take it only this. So this length is what is now uh, called an uh, characteristic length, referring to uh, uh, only in the adjacent zone. So if I have to have my LC by LT, then it is going to be, if I introduce here, this uh, divide this side, LT this side, if I do it. So what is happening? It's KT LT squared I. So KT LT squared I can rewrite it as 2 CI I. So it's going to be mu P times W by 2 CI I. This is what is this LC by LT. So that I should substitute here. So it's going to be mu P times W into 1 minus mu P times W by 2 CI into I. So this is my equation 9. So this is what is the force that is uh, generated uh, in the sliding zone. Sliding zone. Uh, and what is the force in a adjacent zone? Fxa would be half into mu p times w into lc by lt. See, uh, this is uh, simple proportions. See, I, I know that uh, the sliding uh, to takes place uh, is what is physically happening uh, in your uh, uh, tire road interaction. That's a mechanism. And that have to be accounted in this mathematical equation. For that purpose, I defined this length uh, which is defining the length of the adhesion zone from the front of the contact patch. So your LT, if LC is less than LT, what does that mean? So there is sliding initiated. If LC is equal to LT, what does that mean? So it's sliding start. It is not started. That's the condition at point A. If uh, LC is greater than LT, what does that mean? So it is referring to uh, this. So LC is something an imaginary. Uh, LC greater than LT means uh, there, there is no LC there. It is LT itself is uh, complete uh, length of the contact patch. So this LC is something called the characteristic length, uh, which is uh, defining uh, the two regions uh, during the uh, uh, rolling of the uh, tire due to driving tar. So that is how you should understand this uh, expression. So if that is so, if I have my adhesion zone, what is the proportion of the force? So this is that. So when I put here, you can see when LC is equal to LT, when LC equal to LT, what is that condition? Complete addition zone, there is no sliding. So this become one and what is that you have is a half times mu P W. So that's what we have derived and understood. So I'm just writing it uh, conveniently uh, by introducing this uh, characteristic like these expressions. So this is my expression 10. So I have now FXA and FXS and add them that is your total uh, uh, total this one so before that let us now you have here lc by lt expression so let me put that here then it is going to be mu p square w square by 4 ci into i is what is fxa so what is that i am substituting this expression lc by lt into this so that gives me this that's equation 11 so now I have to add equation 11 and 9 to get my total tractive force. So my Fx, Fx is going to be Fx, yes, plus Fx, yay. If I add that, I will have this. So first one is mu P W into 1 minus mu P W by 2 C I into I. Plus second expression is this mu p square w square by 4 c i into i. So if I add this, uh, what is that I'll have? So this term here is 1 minus mu p square w square by 2 c i i plus mu p square w square by 4 c i i. So it's 1 fourth, it's half. So it's going to be 1 minus mu p square 
So of course, this is when I multiply, I have here in PW. So it's, uh, it's going to be mu P W minus mu P square W squared by 4 C I into I. So let me take mu P W in that common. Pw, if I take it out in this common, it's going to be 1 minus mu p w by 4 ci into i. That's my fx. This is the equation number 12. So look at this is my expression fx, which can account now beyond point a as well. And this is my uh, simple expression for having my uh, longitudinal force developed with this basic theory. So if you look at that, is what we had it here. Mu P times W into 1 minus Mu P times W by 4 C I I. So we have derived this expression. Now, uh, breaking force as function of skid, that's why it's in, written in bracket. Breaking effort as function of skid, if I had to get this expression, it is simple that you should understand this relationship here, what we mentioned between I. So I is defined as um, R omega minus V by R omega, whereas IES is defined as V minus R omega by V. So now there is a relationship between I and IES. So I would be equal to modulus value I have to take because one force is one direction, other force is another direction. We will look at only the magnitude. If I have to consider like that, then uh, my expression would be. Uh, the, so the relationship would be I would be IS by 1 minus IS. So this is the relationship between the magnitudes. So if that is so, again we have proved this. So if I take here IS is what? V minus uh, R omega by uh, V divided by 1 minus divided by 1 minus same V minus R omega by V. So if I just take this V common and V V goes off and then it will be resulted into uh, this expression V minus R omega by R omega. So if I take minus out uh, the same as that of I, that's why I put modulus. So this is the relationship. So the slip and skid is related by the magnitudes by this expression. So what does that say is I can replace this I by IS my I, 1 minus IS, right? So that is uh, permitted. So if that is so, now my uh, uh, breaking effort force would come like this. For this breaking effort, my expression would be like this. So to get breaking effort versus skid formula. So what can I do is I have a first expression fx is ci into i that can be analogously changed as a breaking effort as c i instead of i I put here s yes, and call this as skid stiffness into is by 1 minus is that's all. So this I is replaced by this. So this is the equation number 13. <clears throat> and I can define the CSS the same way as do F by do IS as IS tends to zero. So that's again equal to tan beta in the graph. So the graph what we had would be changing, that's all. So uh, now um, from the equation six of that uh, derivation, I can write what is my skid critical value as mu p times w by 2 c s plus mu p times w. So if you look at what was that we had isc uh, uh, in our previous derivation ic as this ic as this equation 6. This is my critical value of IC corresponding to point A in my graph. This is my graph. Um, so this point is A and this is corresponding IC. 
and this is corresponding Fxc. This point O. So this angle is theta. So here this I C is given by this, given by this, and analogously you would have here I S C will be this. That can be proved simply from this expression of substituting for this. So what does that uh, I C was uh, mu P times W by 2 C I. So I have to replace the I C by I S C by 1 minus I S C. Right, because this is a relationship between slip and scale, and then here it is going to be mu p times w by two times instead of ci, I'll put cs. That's all. So now from this, if I ex write an expression for ISC, that is going to be uh, this equation number. Uh, let's call this definition of this as 14, and this is 15. This is equation number 15. So equation number 15 comes uh, in further two steps in this. That I can leave it to you, or you just do the cross product now. So it is ISC into 2 CS. I cross multiply. So mu P times W into 1 minus ISC. So now I have to bring this ISC on this side. So that's going to be uh, 2 CS plus mu P times W into ISC. And in this side I'll have mu P times W. So now what is ISC? It is mu P times W by 2 CS plus mu P times W. So this is exactly what I have written here as an equation 15. So if we have this, now I can write what is corresponding Fxc. So Fxc is what is corresponding to point A. What is that? Uh, um, uh, breaking effort is possible when the complete contact is adhered. And that would be CS times Is by 1 minus Is. And that is again going to be equal to mu p times w by 2. Half the value only is possible. That's equation number 16. So if you substitute ISC, what does that you have here in this? And you would see this is going to result in that. You can prove that and please try that. And then for beyond point. So if you have understood this all, so beyond point A, I can have my Fx. This Fx is what breaking force, so Fxb I will put it, to differentiate from the previous expression. And that's going to be mu p times w, what we had uh, for Fx analogously, 1 minus, and here I will have mu p times w by 4 cs, 4 ci I had, so it's cs it become, and i would be here replaced by 1 minus, here from denominator I had i, so that would be replaced by 1 minus i s, Yes, that's all. So this is the expression 17, which takes care of uh, breaking effort. So this is the basic theory, uh, which is uh, proposed by Julian to have an equation 17 and the equation uh, 12. Respectively, for breaking effort, it will be breaking effort and for attractive force. So these expressions are derived. So this expression now is what is plotted here. So your magic formula also would have like this type of plot only. But if I have this formula and magic formula proposed, if I put, there would be a bit variation. The trend would be similar. It will have a peak value and it fall. But the value trend or the stiffness value may be different. Uh, and uh, that would be more real uh, what is happening in your tire because the tire in this model considered to get this theory, this equation as an elastic band. But tire is not made of uh, uh, elastic uh, uh, property alone. It is also having dissipation of energy. So we have been looking at the properties of tire uh, and its composites and different structures uh, all. So that does got an influence. So in real time, if you are making some measurements uh, of this, and that is not going to exactly fit into this curve proposed by this theory because uh, it is not uh, referring any hyperelasticity or viscoelasticity properties of tire into their, this equation. So, but it is a classical theory proposed, but this is what has been enhanced by eliminating these assumptions what we listed one by one and then uh, there are various tests conducted then the curve fit was made. Uh, and then the equation is proposed and that involves many number of uh, 
coefficients uh, in the equation they represent and the coefficient and the equation would have trigonometric term uh, inverse of trigonometric term and so on though the equation appears complex but that one equation can represent either attractive force or longitudinal slip or breaking effort or skid or lateral force or slip angle or uh, or uh, self aligning torque as function of slip angle all of these uh, two forces and the uh, moment that is realized at the contact patch can be expressed through one single formula proposed by professor um, uh, hans pajeka and that's called uh, pajeka's uh, tire model or magic tire model and that lecture uh, one hour lecture of that model description i'm going to upload uh, in my ms teams today and that please you go through and uh, then we have a similar theory proposed by seagal wherein we have now this tractive force and the uh, longitudinal uh, uh, lateral force combination is there how the equation modifies so that is uh, proposed or explained through an analytical scheme called the friction ellipse model so that also is there part of the lecture so uh, that two lectures i'll upload for you to listen to today or tomorrow uh, according to your time available and uh, ensure that you have got a whole sum of uh, the tire properties and tire models for vehicle dynamic study so with that note i would uh, convey my best regards wishes to you all uh, to do well in your examination i would also post one feedback form or uh, a google form circulate in ms teams that every one of you in our class around 47 total number of students all of you have to uh, upload uh, or send me that uh, and that is also a part of your assessment so the feedback needed to be taken and that's again needed for our um, uh, you know outcome based uh, enhancing for the next semester and it is requirement for any uh, visit by nac or uh, you know that uh, for that purpose. quality audit purpose we have to have that documentation so i would be uploading in ms teams two video lectures and uh, the class notes uh, which all are left uh, uh, from last two some four five lectures their class notes and video lectures link as course is there you are all part of the team so far what's happened you can take it and you can watch again uh, needed right and uh, uh, this is all from my side i'll do your side uh, there are three uploads uh, one is in vtap your digital assignment and secondly uh, your uh, um, uh, digital assignment lecture notes uh, till uh, uh, today after uh, the previous upload after your cat to whatever you have learned in ms teams and third important thing is the course feedback form which i am going to upload in the uh, ms teams so these are the three things from you before uh, late evening today that you are going to send back and uh, quiz two i have uh, written to all of you and uh, let me just uh, have some other calculation normalizing your marks and then uh, account for that mark in quiz two uh, i will put maybe it would be Uh, different than what you have got in your quiz two uh, absolute marks. So I'll do some scaling, scale factor to account. Uh, no, you are not suffering. Uh, that would be uploaded in quiz two marks. So quiz one there is no change. I, I will not do it. So I would take care that uh, uh, in your quiz two and your digital assignment ten marks. I would upload it. So this is all uh, from my side. I will be doing it uh, by tomorrow, uh, and you will know your internal marks. Uh, cat one, cat two already over, and this. 30 marks uh, put together all out of 60 you know tomorrow evening and i would get uh, tomorrow morning uh, uh, from you three uploads vtap upload ms team upload of notes and uh, uh, feedback form uh, from uh, you in ms teams so this is all uh, all the very best for your examination i enjoyed thoroughly of teaching this course to you i made it uh, much better compared to that of earlier delivery Uh, i would uh, strive for making it more clear and no uh, uh, doing that uh, in upcoming semesters as well and if you have any feedback uh, please share with me otherwise i will end the lecture at this point if you have any sir, feedback sir, yeah so the two lectures you're going to assign the two hours one they have to be included in the notes that we have to upload on ms teams uh not necessarily not necessarily i don't want to burden you but i would suggest don't miss that to listen because you would have uh, uh, examination questions based on that as well because that is what i feel it is of complete sense so you have understood the basic theory today uh, uh, this julian's model and it is not uh, the i'm going to derive like that i'm going to explain uh, the 
uh, formula. How that formula is accounting all these uh, both uh, tractive force and lateral force and uh, your self-aligning torque. So that is what is explained and it is explained what all those coefficients that are coming, how the curve fit made, there are different factors, coefficients, those are all explained. You would enjoy that lecture and you would uh, understand uh, uh, the formula and you can use that in vehicle dynamic simulation uh, to represent your tire. And that model limitation is that model is proposed for steady state motion alone. If you have the account during the steady state motion uh, breaking, there is finally a factor is introduced. That is also I have explained. And there are two principles in your tire that's called conicity and ply steer. And that is important. And that is why this uh, 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 formula curve fit will just have an offset from the origin uh, with that. So the new XY axis would be there. There will be uh, um, offset uh, in horizontal and vertical direction. Uh, uh, in order to account the symmetry of your curve, right? Uh, because when you take a viscoelasticity material, you see hysteresis, so that all are accounted in your magic formula, and that's why it's very popular uh, tire model that is used. So you would uh, understand that in your lecture, and uh, again, reference for this is all Wong textbook. Uh, uh, it is there. You can either go through the textbook, or it takes more time, but you listen to that one hour lecture, you would get entire uh, sense of the content. Right. OK, sir. Thank you. OK. Good. How do you enjoy? Do you have a good uh, feedback? Anything or uh, uh, if you want to say some points to improvise, I can uh, accept it basically to up implement in the next uh, semester as well. You have anything to say? Anybody? Akash? Josh? No, so nothing in particular. No, sir. Uh, no, sir nothing. Can I hear that you enjoyed and you really learned? Yeah, sir. It, it was yes, good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. We are deciding on moving forward with the same. Thing. Yeah. Well, thank you. And there are students uh, from second year. No, the students have not done some dynamic course, even sent of material. You will be parallelly doing it. Nothing to worry. At the moment, you feel it's a, what is this something complex appearing. But you would later, as you finish your dynamics course, first, you know, mechanics of machines and this, and you feel. Uh, in third year and uh, near coming to final year, you feel that this course is value added and this lecture notes what you prepared and the videos would help you at the time. You are my student. Anytime you can approach me of any doubts and you want to pursue a project, uh, you can come to me and they can do under my guidance in this field, your project, right? So good day to all of you. I'll just uh, end the meeting. I expect the task uh, from you that three uploads. That's very important, right? Good day. I will download your attendance. Stop recording.